Yeah, Conor McGregor is back on the 18th, isn't it? UFC 246 live from Las Vegas, T-Mobile Arena, Conor McGregor versus Donald Cerrone, 170 pounds. Yeah! Return of the Mac. He's back. Also, by the way, that's going to be John Kavanagh's birthday as well, by the way. Happy birthday to Coach Cav. Barry, I'm not going to lie to you. Um, (laughs) I'm very, very uh, excited for as what Conor McGregor uh, called the start of his season. Yeah. I really like the way he's calling it a season. So do I. I th- yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry for interrupting, but like, is he, he's so ahead of the curve with everything. Yeah. Like, I have not heard one fighter being like, season. Yeah. And that's I, what I, I like it. I'm like, you fight for nine months, you take three months off, and then you fight for nine months. I think that's like the perfect way to do it. Uh, I also think McGregor's brilliant at staying active when he is in the fight game. I think a lot of fighters can learn from that. I don't understand. Like, the fighters don't realize that. You don't get paid for sitting at home. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, that's why I have a lot of respect for Don Cerrone. He gets in the cage so often. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think he's in the top 10 UFC earners of all time now, yeah. just due to the fact that he fights so often. Well, fighters could be injured as well, and they also could be doing side projects as well, you know? I, I know I know a lot of them are, but I think when you get into the UFC, keep it going. Or someone yeah. sometimes, like... You come out and fight relatively unscathed, and then you take a load of time off. Yeah. Like, if that was me, I'd be like, right, I've just done the fight camp. I've just knocked someone out in 10 seconds. I should probably fight again soon while I'm in this good shape. Yeah. I'm staying relevant, man. Yeah. How important is it staying relevant in the fight game? Like, if you look at three people this year who had an absolute outstanding year, Israel Adesanya. Like, he fought multiple times, he stayed relevant, he, you know, kept his face in the news and his body in the octagon. Jorge Masvidal, like, the absolute epitome of doing that. Yeah. And then, like, Henry Cejudo didn't actually fight as much as the other two. But, oh, my God, how, how many times do you have to cringe at saying, bend the knee to triple C? You know what I mean? Yeah. It doesn't actually matter yeah. how often you fight sometimes. You can keep your name in the news. Look at Kobe Covington. Like, so relevant this year. Yeah. And that's what it's all about, isn't it? That is what it's Being all about. Being relevant. Keeping people entertained. Ben Askren, for instance. Yeah. Ben Askren like the epitome of entertainment you know yeah it doesn't actually get much better than Ben Askren facts but but uh Barry how, how much are you looking forward to UFC 246 it is a couple of weeks away it's fast approaching um I'm, I'm sorry it's it still hasn't hit me yet like I think like if I was to ask for a Christmas present this would be it something like this soon a, a, a huge show like mm. something that really helps our audience <coughs> sorry excuse me helps our show grow a lot so like it's it's like oh great you know what I mean like I, I'm not like but like it hasn't yeah, hit yet it so hasn't hit yet. Tell me this: when you first heard the fight was announced, what were your initial thoughts? I was like, I can't believe Connor is taking on Cowboy Strong. <laughs> so you were like, you were delighted it was it was back. Well, well that, but also like he kept saying Khabib's name, and then he was also saying like Frankie Edgar's name, and I was like, which way is he going with this? Like, I mean. Like Khabib and Frank Yeager, like two different weight classes, and it's like, and then Cowboy's name comes out, and it's like, oh, that is like the most perfect fight for him. But the thing is, if you look at Cowboy Cerrone as well, Cowboy Cerrone is like, right, if I beat him, we're off to the races. Yeah, yeah, Ah! (laughs) absolutely. Uh, Cowboy Cerrone has the most wins, the most knockdowns, the most finishes, the most bonuses in UFC history. He's an absolute animal of a fighter. And I think it's the perfect matchup for McGregor as well. He's going to fight someone who's willing to stand and trade with him. Uh, so he says. 170. Do you think that more favours Cerrone? Or now that you've seen McGregor's new physique, it more favours McGregor? Or do you think it doesn't really matter because they're both sort of lightweights fighting at welterweight? See, that's the thing. It's it's 170. Um, I th- like, Conor looks brilliant at that weight, like. You know what I mean? Like, I think 155 looks good as well. 145, he looks like uh, a piranha that need, need, hasn't eaten in a month. But, um, I think it's just, it's perfect for, it's perfect for Cerrone as well. You know what I mean? He doesn't like to make 155 that easy. You know what I mean? It means he can't go on the beers. Um, I don't know. It's just, it's almost like, if, say, if you go on to the UFC fight game, mm. the, like, EA Sports game, and then, you're like right Connor 170 Cowboy 170 
let's go. It's it, it's almost like they'll have each other, they'll fight each other just randomly on the street, sort of thing, you know. Yeah, they're fighting almost that they're walking around way yeah. closer than they are well to their actual fight weight. Yeah. Um, it, it is an interesting way about it. McGregor seems to just fought here because he didn't want to cut the weight, and that's what John Kavanaugh says. Yeah. Do you think that's uh, good though? Um, good mentality to have. Because I'm still on the fence about this. I don't know if that's. I am. I am. I think it, just seeing how serious McGregor is actually taking his training, just from looking at him, and obviously he's doing loads of weight training, looking at his new physique and stuff like that. Uh, I hope I, I just hope he's doing a lot of road work. Uh, he's running those miles. He has that gas tank because there's always that worry: the more muscle you put on, the less f- or the more fatigue you get faster. And yeah. also putting at one seventy, I think Cowboy is less susceptible to the knockout at one seventy than he was one hundred fifty five pounds. That's the way I look at it. Um, I think it might end up being the second or third round before you see a knockout, just due to you know M- McGregor's straight left. As seen against Diaz, it doesn't carry as much at 170. Yeah, but also I don't think, like obviously in the build to the fight we're going to be going over just a lot more. But I don't like Connor carrying that extra weight going into the championship rounds. I don't see the weight helping him. No, neither the not neither do I. Just due to the fact, I think only carrying that extra weight helps if you're a grappler, and obviously he's not a grappler. He's a striker. Like those bigger biceps and bigger shoulder muscles are going to be heavier and going to carry more lactic acid going into the championship rounds than they do in the earlier rounds. Yeah. That's it's, an, it's just an extra interesting uh, thing to the fight, to the fight, really, isn't it? Yeah. And then last time, Cerrone fought Darren Till, who's southpaw as well. Didn't, it wasn't a good night for him either, you know? No, he, he lost that one quite decisively. Um, look, I suppose... You, you have to look at the Cerrone fight. Um, I tell you, I tell you, you're gonna say McGregor's gonna win. Yeah, but I'm not like he's all, uh, uh, like no fight is a gimme fight. You know what I mean? You cannot yeah. be like Conor McGregor is definitely going to win because absolutely not. That's not guaranteed at all. No, who knows? Like even in the fight camp, he could get injured, and you know, you know, Conor doesn't say anything until after the fight if he's injured or not. You know? Yeah. Well, look, I assume he's gonna win. I think you assume he's gonna win. Yeah. Now, I'm not saying. You're not getting guarantees here that he's going to win. Who do you think he's actually going to fight next? Because from seeing him do that interview on the Mac Life, it was almost like he was like, oh, I'm actually not that interested in Jorge Masvidal. Do you think he's just saying at the moment to sort of fob off that? Or do you think he is interested in Masvidal and that's where he's going to go next? I personally think he's going to go for Gagey next. Um... Because I, I sort of want to, like, pan out his season in my head. I know, but, like, almost in my head, like, before you asked me that question, I would have said McGregor fights Cowboy, then fights Masvidal, then fights Khabib. That's the three in the way, like, the three in the row. That season, if you could call it that. But then, is Masvidal meant, meant, meant to wait out? Wait out? Is Masvidal going to be at this event to, for McGregor to be like, oh, I'm the baddest motherfucker in this, in this company? You know what I mean? Yeah. That, like, you could picture him almost saying that. But then, when does Connor ever say anything that you expect him to say? In fairness, you could go for Nate Diaz if you wanted to as well. You know what I mean? I know I, he lost Masvidal, but, like, you could always, like, be like, right, I'll take that third Nate Diaz fight now. I know, but I, I don't see him just knocking around with people with no belts, like, th- with no direct path. That's why he, you, what you said about Gaethje would, would make more sense rather than going to Diaz. Oh, yeah. But uh, my personal... Uh, take is he, I, I feel like he he's almost going to be like shoot up Gagey I'm going <laughs> to knock you out as well and then I'll fight you know what I mean hold on when's could be I'm going to check you probably know it off the top of your head UFC 249 in Brooklyn New York I think it's April well there you go that could be the one maybe like he says he could be ready stay ready uh, that's on April 18th yeah UFC 249 Khabib is taking on Tony Ferguson for the lightweight title so, like, if Connor gets what people are saying, an early finish, he could be on point to fight on that card. Yeah. The only thing is, I don't think he'll actually fight on the undercard on that card, if that makes sense. No. So, like, uh, like he's, either, he's either main event or not. Otherwise, in fairness, you could see him at UFC 250. You know what I mean? Fighting Gagey. Yeah. I wouldn't rule anything out just yet. No. Although, like, DC versus Dipe has to headline an event somewhere as well. Do you think... He could fight, right? Because he's fighting at 170. Yeah. He could fight 
Stephen Wonderboy Thompson for the nicest motherfucker title. Absolutely not. <laughs> I just don't see that happen. <laughs> oh man, that'd be hilarious, wouldn't it? Um, <coughs> who did Pettis fight after he, he fought Wonderboy? Oh, he fought Nate. Was Nate Diaz after that? Yeah, I think so. Oh, it was yeah. I was gonna say like that. Like if Pettis knocked out Wonderboy and then fought something else. No, like, was it not Tony Ferguson? Maybe Tony Ferguson. I think it was. Wasn't oh, it? was it? Yeah, okay. I remember when he had to stop. Yeah, I, I was more of like Pettis versus McGregor would be a nice fight as well to watch. Yeah, just for like actual fight fan fight. Yeah. It's just like in the fight game, like like especially when you're up at the top and you're Conor McGregor, you're not going to get like a few. You're not going to fight Cerrone and then fight Frank Yeager and then fight Uriah Faber and then yeah. fight Khabib. You know, what I mean? it's mm. like right one big fight, one big win, and you're up there. Yeah, look at Darren Till; he was like stone dead, and then came back. I know he's next thing you know he could be the next middleweight contender. Yeah, yeah. It's mad the ups and downs of the fight game, isn't it? It is, man. It, yeah, it is. It's up and down, up and down, up and down. Like it's a, it's a madness. But uh, so we're both sort of thinking. I'm sh- let us know who you think is going to win. But uh, Conor McGregor against Cowboy Cerrone at the moment. I'm thinking Conor. He's looking very fresh. I just follow Cowboy mm-hmm. on my own Instagram there, just to, to s- sort of stay up in his fight camp. Yeah, see yeah, what have, he's up to. Yeah, I haven't really seen it yet though. See if he's drinking any beers. Yeah, but like Conor and the, the whole team, SBG are over in Vegas. Yeah, did you see Shane? Yeah, Shane Mullins over there. Yeah. Yeah. Fair play to him. What a legend. Oh no, fair play to him. Yeah, but I was like, he's not really that tall though, is he? Not like. Like you would have thought, King Cowdy would be. Yeah, but I think he's. I think he was a kickboxer, so I think that's where like that yeah. stems from. Yeah. Well, fair play to him. Fair yeah. play, Shane. Shane follows the page. Over in the UFC PI. Yeah. Where he's over there, like beside Dominic Cruz, and I was like, oh my god, he's actually so much bigger than Dominic Cruz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, was oh, like, Jeez. I can't wait I to see. Mad. Yeah, I can't wait to see the build up. Oh, the build up. You just. You're, you're yeah, just I can't like, wait for embedded. Yeah, yeah. It just gets you really, really excited. But uh, also, as we said, myself and Ross just applied for a media credentials for Bellator. Dublin, that's coming up as well. That's going to be headlined by James Galler. Uh, also, he, it's announced that James Galler is going to be going to Foycon as well. Uh, Ross. Win or lose, he's on the boo as well. Win or lose, he is on the boo. But uh, what, do, you want, do you want to say a couple of things about Bellator Dublin that's coming up soon? Yeah, so Bellator Dublin's coming back. Um, look, Bellator always look after us really, really well. We love going to their events. Um, I think this time it's going to be a much better matchup for James. Much, much more of a test. I think Cal Elner is eight and two. Yeah. So he was meant to fight him last time. Yeah, and a lot more sort of respectable record, one might say, yeah. um, than anyone he's fought recently. And uh, also, you have uh, Aaron Chalmers or Aaron Jordy Shore, as he's affectionately known, fighting on that card. And um, I think he changed his name on Twitter to Aaron Old Chalmers. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> so he's Irish. Yeah. Um. Who else do we have? Um, yeah, Ryan Scope. R- Ryan Scope is, is fighting uh, Peter Queedy. Or Redzer. Yeah. And then Peter Queedy is fighting... Uh, Brent Primus. Brent Primus, uh, former Bellator lightweight champion. Yeah. Uh, that should be a great fight. Yeah. I think Richie Coyley's going to fight on the card as well. Uh, probably Richie Smullen, Will Flurry. So you're getting sort of all your Irish heads in there. And it looks like they're all fight- facing uh, stiffer competition than they did last time. Yeah. It's going to be... Oh, I sort of like going into the Bellator fights when I don't know if the Irish person's going to win. Yeah. That That's atmosphere what? is just off the rails, Ross. Isn't, isn't it? it? Oh, it's brilliant. How, okay, we just sent off our media like our credentials and then I got in touch with the girl Holly who sorted us out last time. Uh, I'm waiting for her to get back in touch with us. I'm sure things will be fine. And then do you think I should just fire off another email saying, hi, uh, also, we could, we'd love to do, run a competition for you or something? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I'd love to uh, give away two free tickets to Bellator Rum. I think that'd be unreal. Yeah, that sounds pretty good to me. Um, then obviously, Foycon is going down as well the week yeah. after. That's going on a cork. I think tickets are still on sale, aren't they? Yeah, so Bellator... It's the 22nd. It's 22nd. Same night, Tyson Fury is fighting Deontay Wilder. And then the week after, it's Foycon. It's on a cork. Um, February 29th. February 29th. Like people leap are, year. The day of the leap. Uh, people are going Ben Askren, Stephen Wonderboy Thompson, James Gallagher, Will Flurry, Michael Venom Page, Paul Daly, uh, Ian Gary, Charlotte, he's going as well. Uh, Spike O'Sullivan. Uh, there's more. We, yeah, I think Richard, we are going. Richie Coyley, energized. The yeah, lads. The lads. We're, um, we, I think we might be doing like some competitions to win tickets and that on the way up to it. But uh, yeah, we'll keep you posting all that shit because it's, uh, it's going to, like this year, it's going to be, it's going to be madness. Yeah, it really, really will be madness. Um, out of the entire lineup, I think sort of starts with by, 
But no, MVP, Wonderboy Thompson, Ben Askren, James Gallagher. Who are you looking forward to meeting most? Ben Askren. Just because he's funny. Just like the controversy he caused last year that I just... I can't wait to have a chat with him and see what the story is. Do you think he's fully retired now? Who knows? Give him a while off. He's playing disc golf. He could get a bit bored and want a, want a bit of a grapple. Yeah, I'm not too sure either. I think... I think he loves that, that bit of extra cash he gets thrown his way when he does a fight, and I think that might entice him back in. Uh, I'm actually really looking forward to beating uh, Stephen Wonderboy Thompson. Uh, he just seems like, like such a nice guy. Yeah. That I'm just like, I can't wait to do the thumbs up and stand next to him. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. The energy always thumbs up. I could have some of him on the show. But yeah. uh, if you're enjoying the MMA show, make sure to like, subscribe. Um, we will be back next week in the build-up for UC 246. It's going to be great.